Welcome to our talk about welfare maximizing guarantee dashboard mechanism. I'm Yuan from Google Research, and this is based on the work with Jason Halai from Northwestern and Jamie Mao Balusi Wang from Google Research. In the past two to three years, we have witnessed a shift from second price auction to first price auction in the online advertisement market. The main reason behind such a shift is the transparency issue of the second price auction. In general, in a second price auction, bidder do not know ahead of time what price they are going to pay if they win the auction. Such a problem was formalized by the notion of credibility. So an auction is credible if the seller has no incentive to deviate from the auction. It's clear that a second price auction is not credible because the seller has the incentive to fabricate a second high speed to improve her revenue. On the other hand, it turns out that first price option is credible. However, shifting to a first price option does not solve all the transparency issues. For example, the buyer uh, still does not know the allocation ahead of time. And moreover, since the first price option is not incentive compatible, the bidder may find it difficult to reason about the optimal bids, especially in a prior free environment. So in this paper, we'd like to resolve these two issues by introducing new ideas in mechanism design. So to solve our problem, let's try to look at a simple setting first in which there is only one bidder. It turns out that when there is only one bidder, we have a very nice solution to our problem, which is a dashboard mechanism. So intuitively, a, a dashboard mechanism basically posts a dashboard. A dashboard is basically a mapping from the bias bid to an allocation probability. And the payment format of the dashboard mechanism is simply winner pays bid. As a result, a dashboard mechanism basically enjoys all the properties that we want. First of all, it's a winner pays bid mechanism. And secondly, uh, the, the bidder will know the allocation and payment ahead of time because basically all of them is written in the dashboard. And finally, it's very easy for them to compute their optimal bid because they only need to best respond to the dashboard according to their own valuation. So a natural question we'd like to ask is how powerful is a dashboard mechanism? It turns out that it's powerful enough to implement any truthful single agent mechanisms. So what I mean is that we can start uh, from any uh, monitor allocation rule according to Martin's characterization of truthful single agent mechanism. And then there is a way for us to convert the allocation rule into a dashboard mechanism. So now we have a very nice solution for, uh, for our problem when there is only one bidder. So the question we would like to ask in our paper is that we'd like to decide dashboards when there are multiple bidders. To do so, let's try to replicate what we have done in a single bidder environment. Uh, for example, we can simply start from an allocation rule, which might correspond to some uh, desirable equivalent outcome that we want to implement. Yeah, we then compute the dashboard for each bidder according to the allocation rule, and then post the dashboard uh, for each bidder. After receiving the dashboard, the bidders can interact with their dashboard, submit their bid, and see their auction outcome. Uh, the nice thing about this design is that after receiving their dashboard, the bidder only need to focus on their dashboard. So when they try to reason about their bid, there is no reason for them to concern about other bidder strategy because the auction outcome is fully written in their own dashboard. However, to implement this idea, we have two challenges that we need to overcome. The first one is that uh, in this scheme, basically we post the dashboard before knowing any bidder's bids. As a result, we need some side information to guide our design of the dashboard. Otherwise, there is no way for us to provide any provable guarantees. The second thing is that uh, there could be some feasibility constraint across all these dashboards. For example, we only have one item to sell. Then basically it says that for any possible uh, bid, uh, bidding profile, the summation of allocation rule uh, given by all these dashboards should be at most one. Otherwise, there is no way for us to deliver the promise. So with these two changes in mind, let me uh, first try to solve the first challenge. So the first challenge basically asks us that we do need some side information to help us decide the dashboard. And intuitively, one natural way to select the side information is to use the historical information, which is well motivated in online advertisement market because we are running repeated auctions. However, one need to be careful about how to use the historical information because we could be using a bidder's past bid to price him in the future which may introduce an uh, incentive issue. So an elegant way to solve this is that we only use other bidders historical information to decide the dashboard. To make this idea concrete, let's say the historical information we have is simply the other bidders uh, value in the first round. 
That way we decide the dashboard for the first bidder and the information we have will be the valuation of the other two bidders in the first row. And the design of the dashboard for the other two bidders are similar. So now we have some side information, but could we achieve anything on true now? Unfortunately, the answer is still no due to the feasibility constraint. It turns out that the best thing we can do is to do a random allocation. So basically we allocate it to each bidder uniformly and random. And here is the uh, uh, proof. So basically we can look at the dashboard of each bidder and it's not hard to see that there should be a bidder uh, in which the maximum allocation probability of that bidder's uh, dashboard is at most 101. Otherwise there will be an allocation pro uh, evaluation profile in which the summation of allocation probability is larger than one, which makes it invisible. Now we can focus on such a bidder and start uh, from any valuation profile. And then we push such bidder's valuation to infinite. Since the allocation probability for this bidder is at most 1OM, which results in a 1OM uh, approximation. The risk case, this uh, impossibility result tells us that we do need some relationship for the valuation profile in success rounds to achieve uh, non-trivial results. So here comes uh, our uh, dynamic private free environment, so which is also well motivated by online advertisement market. So in online advertisement market, there is one phenomenon which we call valuation persistence, which means that bidders bidding on the same keyword are unlikely to have very different valuations and every successful rounds. So more formally, what I mean is that if you look at a pair of valuation profile in successful rounds, then this pair of valuation profile is valid if the p-norm of their difference is bounded. So in this paper, we are interested in three uh, different norms. The first one is zero norm, which basically corresponds to the environment in which the number of buyers whose valuation can change is bounded. We are also interested in one norms, which corresponds to the situation in which the summation of value changes among all these buyers is bounded. Finally, we look at infinite norm, which corresponds to the situation in which the maximum value change among all these buyers is bounded. Uh, with this prior free environment, we only need to uh, give guarantee uh, on the feasibility constraint of our dashboard for this value instance. In other words, our environment is neither is not Bayesian, uh, but it's not uh, fully adversary. Okay. So uh, with uh, the, the uh, prior free environment, we are now able to uh, reduce our mechanism design problem to an algorithm design problem in the following sense. So basically our objective is trying to do welfare maximization. Basically we, we try to maximize the inner product between the allocation rule and the evaluation profile. And we have two constraints here. One is that we want the allocation rule to be monotone for each buyer so that we are able to convert the allocation rule into a dashboard mechanism. And more where we have a feasibility constraint. So basically for any valid pair of valuation profile or any valid instance, the summation of allocation probability is at most one. So to have a better understanding of our problem, let's take a look at a simple example. So we consider a zero norm environment in which only one bias value can change. So here is the optimal mechanism. So in this mechanism, the allocation rule looks as follows. So buy I receive the item with probability one through if buy I's valuation in the current round ranks among top two in the valuation profile constituted by his own valuation in the current round and other, value, uh, other bias valuation in the previous round. And here, let's try to look at a concrete example. So basically in the valuation profile in the previous round, uh, we have uh, five, three buyers, uh, four buyers, and their valuation is five, four, two, one. And in the next round, buyer one's valuation goes down from five to three. So in this example, um, buyer one will receive the item because the uh, valuation profile using his allocation rule will be uh, three, so which is his own valuation in the current round, while all the other buyer's valuation in the previous round, which is four, two, one and his valuation is among top two in this valuation profile. And for the other three buyers, since their valuation does not change, so basically they are still facing the valuation profile in the previous round. So in this way, the buyer with value four can receive the item with probability one. So now we can say this uh, mechanism is feasible because uh, the, we only give allocation to three, uh, two buyers and the allocation probability for each buyer is one, three, uh, one third. 
And moreover, we can see that we can achieve one approximation because we do allocate to the bar with the highest valuation in the current row, which is the bar with valuation four. Yeah, let's try to change this uh, example slightly. And now we say the buyer with the third buyer whose value goes up from two to six. Now in this example, the buyer's value really will again receive the item because his value is the highest in this uh, valuation profile. But for all the other three buyers, the first two buyers will receive the item because their value is among top two in this valuation profile. Yeah, again, this mechanism is feasible in this uh, situation because there are we uh, give allocation one third to three different buyers. And again, we allocate uh, the item with one third probability to the buyer with the highest valuation in the current row. So yeah, it turns out that in general, this mechanism is feasible because we only give allocation to three buyers. So a buyer can get the allocation only if his value is already among top two in the previous uh, rounds or his value changes. And this is the only if, uh, situation. So this mechanism can give allocation to at most three buyers. And more always not hard to show that we will always give the item with probability one third to the highest bidder in the current round. So uh, and more always it turns out that the one third lower bar is in, indeed high. And this is the example to show this. Uh, in this short talk, I will not go deeply in this example. But basically our construction is trying to exploit the conflicts between two banks. One fact is that the allocation probability has to be high in some instance so that we can achieve a good welfare. However, due to the interconnection across all these, ten, all these instances, the allocation rule can appear in different instances. And finally, we have a feasibility constraint, which can restrict how large this uh, probability can be, which will lead to a, an upper bound on the approximation ratio. Yeah, uh, in our paper, we, is, uh, we provide an almost uh, complete picture of the welfare loss we need to suffer in design our guaranteed dashboard mechanism. So in zero norm, we use combinatorial arguments to uh, design our mechanism. And for infinite norm and one norm, we basically use welfare maximization with different regularizers. In infinite norm, we use welfare maximization with a channel entropy regressors, which is adapted from the famous uh, exponential mechanism from differential privacy. As for one norm, we replace the Channel entropy regressors with the quadratic regressors, which is inspired by the online commerce optimization literature. So the high level takeaway here is that if the bound on the norms is generally small, then the welfare loss is relatively small. On the other hand, if the bound is large, then large loss in welfare will be inevitable. So in the paper, we also have detailed discussion about how to implement the dynamic guarantee dashboard mechanisms in multiple rounds. Our implementation can achieve uh, many nice solution concepts, such as dynamic as post Nash and parent dominant strategy equilibrium. Our implementation also allows us to infer the bidder's true valuations from their uh, past bids to the dashboard. In the paper, we also consider uh, other allocation constraints uh, by going beyond selling only one item. So in particular, we consider major allocation constraints and um, allocation constraints beyond that. So as a summary, in this paper, we propose dynamic guarantee dashboard mechanisms under value evolution assumptions. Our mechanism enjoys several nice properties such as winner pays bid, and which is very easy to bid for the buyers. And moreover, the buyers can know their allocation and payment ahead of time. To do so, we need to pay some welfare loss. And in the paper, we characterize the asset welfare loss we need to pay. As for future directions, uh, first of all, it would be very interesting to make our mechanism more robust. Yeah, because we now use uh, different techniques to tackle different norms. So it would be nice to have a unified mechanism that performs well for all norms. Now, our mechanism also depends on the knowledge of the bounds. So it would be very interesting to have a mechanism that's agnostic to all these bounds. Yeah, finally, it would be an intriguing question to consider how to do revenue optimizations for our mechanism. In this paper, we mostly focus on uh, welfare optimization. Yeah, thank you for your attention.